So Rebecca, we're going to talk about anxiety and how it doesn't just affect adults, it affects people of all ages and that includes children as well. Shall we start off by defining what is anxiety and how does that differ from, I guess, normal feelings of being anxious that we get from time to time? So we all get feelings of worry or fear in response to certain situations. Where it starts to, to go into anxiety is where you're getting those feelings regularly even though you don't have that external pressure and where it's having an impact on your life and you're getting symptoms more often than you're not. You know, when we, when we talk about anxiety, the reason why we want to address it early is because it, longer term it can lead to, to behavioural and physical problems. So it's best to address it as early as possible. Um, thinking about children, what might be some of the common triggers of anxiety or some of the causes of anxiety in children? Children can be really disrupted by things that adults may not find traumatic. Things like a house move, for example, or a change in school, addition of a new sibling. But also, you know, some children will be unfortunately affected by very traumatic experiences, such as a bereavement in the family. So those can also be triggers. And I think finally, you know, it's, it's difficult as a family, but family conflict, yeah. arguments yeah. can be really upsetting for children and, and can all be triggers. And how might it present itself in a child? It, it's very variable, isn't it? Because actually we're talking about a wide age range. Yeah. But, but broadly a change in the child's behaviour, either at home and or at school, you know, we, we should be aware of, of those as symptoms. So a child that suddenly becomes really clingy, mm. doesn't want to go into school at all, is anxious if they, you know, can't hold your hand when they're walking along the street, a child that becomes more irritable or really tearful, and changes in sleep in particular, you know, a, a child that's waking up in the middle of the night, can't go to sleep, or even a regression in terms of behaviour, such as suddenly wetting the bed when they were dry before, can all be red flags. So what are some of the ways in which we can start to, to manage anxiety in children? I think first of all, um, how can we have the conversation with them? How can we talk to them? Like you said, children of all different ages, I'm sure there'll be different techniques. Mm. And then what are some of the strategies we can try and put in place to manage anxiety with our children? So when we're talking about talking to your child, it may not just be a single conversation. Yeah. It might be multiple conversations over a long period of time to kind of really uncover what's going on. And sometimes, depends on the age of the child, but sometimes having a conversation that's not directed at the child. Yeah. So, you know, talking about their favourite cuddly toy, you know, do you think Teddy might be a bit worried about something? Do you think Teddy might be having some symptoms that are actually because of worries that Teddy is having? I think, do you think watching TV programmes together as well, or sometimes even yeah. in children's TV programmes, um, helping them sort of start to recognise what anxiety is by talking about other people on shows or TV? Yeah, and, and I think definitely when we're all talking about, you know, a family that might be going through a divorce or a traumatic event like a bereavement, you know, reading books that address that or watching TV programmes about those particular events and how children have coped with it can be really helpful as well. What about slightly older children? So I think with them, you can start to have that conversation about that link between the thoughts and worries that we have in our head and the physical symptoms to try and make that connection for them. And, you know, a lot of that is about role modelling. Yeah. You talking about your own experience and yeah. what has worked for you and actually just spending the time to be able to deal with coping mechanisms with them. And you mentioned about being a role model. I think it's important we remember that we're such important role models for our children and self-care is important for the parent as well. Especially, it's very difficult if you have a child who's experiencing any mental health problems. Mm. So that self-care is crucial. Yeah, completely. You know, I, I think there's ways of role modelling, ways to deal with the anxiety as well. You know, things like creating a worry box that your child can put worries into. Mm. Could be something that you do as a family. Yeah. Breathing exercises like breathing in for three seconds, holding for three seconds and then breathing out for three seconds could be something that you do with your child. And if families feel like they need more support than that, where can they go to access it? So it's really important that families seek help sooner rather than later. There's lots of resources out there. I think it's really good to contact the child's school. You know, 
link in with their teacher. It may be something that you know, you're not experiencing at home that actually the teacher is able to add to. There's often counselling or pastoral services at school who can also support a child in that setting. And I'd always recommend people to go and speak to their GP. They're a great first port of call and they can, you know, support you with the talking therapies, with the meditation, with all of those things, not just with, you know, referral and medication options, etc.